Hey, what's up, everybody? It is now January 2024, which means it has been just about a year since I left my role in Big Four Consulting to pivot to where I am now in the world of investment banking. This anniversary, as I guess you could call it, made me reflect on kind of this last year and just the process that I went through to get to where I am now. And I understand I posted a video kind of talking about why I left my role uh, at KPMG and I that talked about my new job, but I didn't actually explain how I made that switch. So in today's video, I'm gonna start off by kind of giving you some context, talking about like, first why I did want to pivot out of the role that I was in, but then more importantly, I'm gonna dive into how I actually made it happen. This is a question I get asked all the time on this channel, on TikTok, in person. So I think this will be super helpful for those of you who maybe are thinking of a career switch for yourselves. So with that said, let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, I think it's important to provide some context. So I started at KPMG in July of 2022. I graduated from the University of Florida with a degree in finance in May of that year. And I want to make sure before we go in any deeper, I really enjoyed my time at KPMG. So by no means am I trying to discredit any of that. I think it is a great place to work, a great company to be a part of, and I'm very grateful for that opportunity because not just is it, you know, a stepping stone to where I am now, but it also is what allowed me to move to New York. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's get back into it. So I started at KPMG July of 22, and I really didn't know what to expect. I didn't have an internship in consulting. My internships were all kind of in finance. So I really wasn't sure what to expect, but I knew I was going to go into it with an open mind. I was obviously super motivated and, and ambitious and just wanted to make it happen. So I really went into it with that mindset and had a great time. I made some amazing friends, but quickly soon after, I kind of realized I just didn't really enjoy what I was doing. It was different than I had kind of anticipated. Coming from a degree in finance, I definitely had more of the traditional finance background and what I was doing was more in the weeds, that like kind of internal controls. I don't even really know how to explain it, but my group was the Financial Services Regulatory Compliance Risk Group. So we were still working with financial institutions, but you know, it's not like I was crunching numbers per se. So it was just a little bit different than I had anticipated. And it was scary. I looked at what the partner was doing on a daily basis. I looked at, you know, five years down the road, 10 years down the road, and it wasn't what I wanted my career or my life to look like. And that was scary because that's what everybody as an associate aspires to get to. They all want to be a partner and everything is about the partner track. And to realize that that's not where I wanted my life to be it was a scary thing because then every you know day forward would be spent getting towards that. So as soon as I made that realization, I kind of decided, okay, I'm going to make the most of this role. I'm going to stick around for the two years, get promoted, and then leverage that promotion to pivot into something else. What that other thing would be, I didn't know, but I wanted to go into it just putting myself in the best position possible. And I also want to iterate that I still was performing well in the role. I wasn't having any struggles. All my performance reviews were great. So I was planning on just doing the job and doing a great job and then using that experience to then take me where I wanted to go. Lo and behold, that's not what happened. Uh, after about six months, I saw a LinkedIn job suggestion for the role I am in now. I thought it looked really interesting, went down that path and got the offer. So I know that was an oversimplification kind of of that process, but that is the point of this part of the video. So now that you kind of understand the mindset that I was in of, you know, not really enjoying the role, not really seeing a lot of opportunity for that to evolve and change in the future. I, I think that's something that a lot of you can relate to. And I think that's an important thing to realize if you want to switch jobs. It's important to realize what you don't like so that you maybe don't make that mistake in the future. So with that said, I'm now going to shift gears into realistically how I made the switch and what I think you can do to do it as well. So I think one of the more important things for me when I was going through the interview process for the role I'm in now is making sure that I could truly explain why I was leaving after such a short period of time. I was fortunate that I still had a job when I was applying for other jobs. So it wasn't like I was super desperate and clearly just needed a job. It gave me a little bit of leverage, but I also didn't want it to look like I was just someone who couldn't stick through things when times are tough. I, I wanted to make sure that they knew I just wasn't interested in what I was doing and wanted to pursue something I was passionate about. 
And that's what I recommend to everybody who reaches out to me is have a very clear picture of why you want to leave your job and make that switch. If it's just, oh, to pay, you know, that's a valid excuse or a valid reason, but it's just not going to be enough because there's always going to be a job that pays you more. But for me, in all of my interviews, I was really able to communicate what I was doing in my role currently and why that wasn't what really lit a fire in me and why the new role that I was applying for was so interesting and made me excited. I think through communicating this, the passion really came through. And again, like I said before, because I already had the job in a prestigious industry, a prestigious company, it made it a little bit easier of a sell. But I think this is something that everybody needs to think through if you're trying to pivot is why are you trying to pivot? Not just to go to a better name, to go to a better paying job, a, be- a better location. Think about truly what it is you want. And for me, I-, I wanted to be in person. So that was another huge aspect of it. I wanted to be more client facing. And that was another thing. And I, re- I really thought those things through prior to the interviews. And I think I was able to communicate that very eloquently in all of my conversations. Another thing that I recommend to everybody in I think this makes a lot of sense because people have reached out to me because they wanted to see how I went through the processes. Reach out to other people in your network who successfully pivoted away. I know for me, coming from UF, I was very fortunate to have a huge alumni network, but it was super helpful for me at KPMG to then see people who had worked at KPMG and then pivoted to other companies, other industries, whatever it may be. And I was always willing to send that cold LinkedIn DM, reach out to to whatever contact I might know who is connected to that person and just try to have that conversation because it's so helpful to actually talk to someone who's done exactly what you're doing. I think it's so important to just leverage those people, understand their growing pains, what worked, what didn't, and just have those conversations. And who knows, maybe they can give you a referral at the company that they're at. Um, But I think it's just so important to have those conversations. And sometimes you'll learn something that you never would have thought. And that was something that I did a lot of. And it is always kind of weird to go about it. But because the person's no longer at the company, they'll typically totally understand how you're feeling. They often had the same feelings and experiences and took that leap. So much of the times it's just about taking that leap. And it's really refreshing sometimes to talk to people to just understand that you're in the same boat. You're not alone in these feelings. Um, cause that can't be isolating at times thinking you're the only person who doesn't love your job, um, whatever it may be. So definitely, definitely leverage that. Talk to people who have gone down the road that you want, who have exited whatever company that you're at, because they're just going to know the process and what interviewers thought of their company, of their group, whatever it may be. It's just so helpful to, to have that conversation. Next up, I think it's so important to see the adjacencies in the role that you're currently into the role you want to go into. And I understand that every exit opportunity is different and draws on different skill sets, but there's always something that you can find that bridges that gap and makes things click. And for me, my team that I joined was in a very high growth kind of startup environment. They're going through some growing pains. And here I came from a traditional kind of consulting background. So I was really able to kind of talk through kind of the processes and the workflows that I learned in consulting at KPMG and how I foresaw that being really helpful for the team that I was potentially joining. Also, pivoting from from big four consulting, management consulting, whatever you want to call it, to any company you go to, they're going to just, it's going to give you a stamp of credibility. I think that was something that we kind of all underestimate being in the role of this, what I tell to all my friends who are currently still at KPMG and other people I talk to on LinkedIn is, you kind of get in a, a microcosm of thinking, oh, this isn't that impressive. Like, I don't really like what I'm doing, whatever. It's it's just X, Y, Z company. But to the outside of the world, to the rest of the world, they think that's really impressive. And I think that's some, th- something you need to leverage. And something I certainly did is I went through this process at a consulting firm. I knew how to go from point A to point B, delivering projects to clients, all of that, all the buzzwords that you can think of. That is something I definitely took advantage of in my interview process because the people I would be joining didn't have that experience. And so therefore, that was a huge competitive advantage for me. But again, kind of going back to the beginning of this this section, I should say, is see those adjacencies. If you're trying to pivot into a more analytical investment banking or asset management role, think through what you were doing in Excel or the different analysis that you had to do for a company or projections. Even if your projection initially was 
forecasting employee count or something for a company. Think through how that could then be transitioned into investment decisions and things like that. There's always ways to think things through. And another thing for me is in consulting, I was able to lead plenty of client calls already, which was a huge competitive advantage for me on the team that I was on. And that then allowed me to kind of talk about that experience in these interviews. I've had these conversations with clients. I've had to manage that. I also had to kind of manage a team, you know, overseas in India. And that was a huge thing too. And that's something that we also often overlook in our consulting roles. It's like, ah, everybody's doing this. So it's not that special. But no, that is pretty special and allows you to stand out. So that's kind of another thing that I always talk about is just to always find those adjacencies. And even if it's not directly, you're not building out a DCF model. So how can that apply to investment banking? Well, you know, it's never going to be a perfect fit, but that's why you got to be creative. And sometimes that's what allows you to stand out even more is that you can bring that fresh, different perspective to a team that they didn't have before everybody who went down kind of the same pipeline. All right. And the final thing is the most important, and that is just take action. I think the the most common thread that it, I was able to see in the conversations I had with people on my team after I told them I was leaving and other people at the firm who, had joined, who I had joined with was, I have the same thoughts and feelings and I just never acted on them. Um, the craziest thing is when I went through the process, I told my team that I was leaving, someone communicated that they had those exact same feelings for five years and just never took that action. And that was, you know, kind of sad, kind of scary to think that you could blink and you're five years down the road and doing something that you don't love. And obviously we're all so fortunate to be in the position we're in. This is, these are certainly first world problems, but I think it's so important to not settle and not be complacent early on in your career. Um, there were plenty of conversations I had with my friends where it's like, oh, just stick around, you know, this extra time, get promoted and then pivot and, you know, don't leave within a year because then you'll have to give back your signing bonus and X, Y, Z. And for me, it's just, I would have taken a pay cut to be doing something I could enjoy. And now after being in the new role that I've been in, I know that's the fact. And I feel so much better about myself. I, I look forward to every single day. And that's not something I could really say before. Um, and I think the biggest thing is just take that action. But like I said, the last thing you want is to be five years down the road and realize this was a mistake. And I think especially early on in your career, that's when it's not too late. You're not too far down the road where pivoting would then set you back five years. You're only six months, a year, two years, even four years into your careers right now. In the grand scheme of a 40-year career, that is a small blip. And I think it's just so important to just take that action, take that leap of faith, obviously be smart and responsible about it. Don't leave your job before you have another job, but don't be complacent just because you live a comfortable lifestyle right now. Always ask yourself what an ideal life for you would look like, what an ideal career. And what you're doing now, is that getting you closer to that? And maybe it is. Maybe you do want to stick around for two years, get promoted, and then take that, that next step. That's perfectly fine. That's what I was planning on doing and probably what I would have done if things didn't work out the way they did. But I think it's just important to have those thoughts and not to gaslight yourself that, oh yeah, this actually is exactly what I wanted to be doing because that for a while is what I was doing to myself. I was kind of gaslighting myself into thinking, no, oh, this is the best place I could possibly be. I'm learning so much. And I think it is all just perspective and there's a lot of different mentalities to go into it, but just don't settle. Don't be complacent. Always strive for more. You're always going to be grateful that you did. And with that, that's going to wrap up the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some guidance, some insights from it, from my rambling. If you like this content where it's a little bit more unscripted, let me know down below in the comments if you have any other ideas for videos. I just want to help you guys out. I want to help you live the life that you dream of. Um, I'm so grateful to be in the position that I'm in, you know, in New York at a job I enjoy, getting to connect with thousands of people every single day. It's awesome. Um, and I want everybody to feel that excitement and that gratitude as well. So if there's anything I can ever do for you, please feel free to reach out on LinkedIn, connect with me, you know, reach out if you want a, a deeper conversation on this. I'm happy to help. And as always, like this video, subscribe for more content just like this. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.